welcome back uh, this is balu here from sp tech today's session will be on uh, software design we are in uh, part 4 of uh, software design where we are going to deal with uh, these session objectives we are going to discuss on functional design and object oriented design so there are two uh, types of uh, design strategies what we call them as functional design and object oriented design and we adopt uh, these kind of uh, design strategies depending upon the problem we try to solve first we shall focus on what do you mean by a functional design now as you can see from the slide here the functional design it's been in practice for quite some time now which means that the functional design was one of the most practiced design till object oriented design came into picture and most of the programming languages supported uh, functional design like programming languages like c then cobol then fortran they all supported functional design and there are lot of systems in the world today which have been designed on functional design and which have been properly working as of today so what exactly is uh, functional uh, uh, design so as the name itself uh, indicates the functional design focuses on functions okay and uh, what exactly is a function a function is nothing but a module or it could be a method which performs a particular function and the basic input to create those functions would be your software requirement specification document inside the software requirement specification document the requirement which i am going to take into consideration is called as functional specification so functional specification which is present in the software requirement document is used as an input in order to perform a functional design and in order to do this we follow a, a paradigm called divide and conquer approach now what exactly is divide and conquer approach we are going to see that in the form of a diagram now have a look at this uh, particular picture here you have srs srs stands for uh, uh, software requirement uh, specification which has got functional specification from those functional specification we come at a functional design but how do we arrive at that we follow a concept called uh, divide and conquer method now what is a divide and conquer method so we have a problem in hand now this problem has to be converted into a solution now who gives you a problem a customer gives you a problem where he actually he wants to automate a particular uh, uh, automate a particular case where he would want to convert from the old system to a new system so in that case his problem if it has to be tackled what we do in divide and conquer method is we divide that problem into number of sub problems and we tackle individual sub problems so that you know tackling a sub problem would be much easier than tackling the entire problem because we are dividing the sub problem into solvable components now you can see that this problem is divided into two sub problems and we arrive at a solution to this sub problem we also arrive at a solution to this sub problem we combine both the solutions and when we combine both the solutions we would have arrived at a solution to the main problem this is how even britishers approach in approach to basically uh, conquer india what they basically did was they divided india into number of small territories and zone they started conquering those territories and zone and one fine day they had actually conquered the entire india now this is what you mean by divide and conquer method which was predominantly used in uh, functional design and still it is being in practice in some of the systems now uh, functional design approach is primarily focused on functions as you can see from the picture here whenever you talk of a functional design it consists of functions and functions are those uh, entities which can interact with other functions for some transfer of data and they can also share a common uh, memory so we can call functions are those functional units which transform inputs to output that means any function basically does a transformation and that transformation happens from input to output now this functional design process is uh, basically having three steps one is called the data flow design and the second one is called the structural decomposition and the third step is called as a detail design now what is a data flow design the data flow design is one where the data processing in a system is modeled now what is data processing data processing talks about how input is converted to an output now you have a function now the function takes some input and it is actually converting into an up output the process of this functional transformation of input to output is called as a data flow design then uh, 
Structural decomposition, whenever you think of decomposition, understand that decomposition means breaking it down. So when you have a function which is further decomposed to sub-functions, this is called as structural decompositions. We actually do it using a structure chart. We will have a separate section on uh, structure charts in my future uh, video series. And the most importantly, we also have a detailed design. Just by merely making functions and putting it on a drawing board is not going to help you. You have to really convert that design into some kind of a program design language. Either it could be a pseudocode or an algorithm to describe what exactly that particular function is doing. So the design process is actually a three-step process which involves data flow design, which involves structural decomposition and it involves a detailed design. Now have a look at this picture here where we talk about the functional view of a compiler structure. We all know what a compiler is. A compiler is one which basically accepts a high level language and converts it into a machine level language. Now when you are talking of a compiler structure, now we have identified certain modules here. Now these modules are nothing but functions. Now what you have to understand here is not about the complexity of the compiler. We are worried about how these modules are interrelated to each other. Now just focus on the naming of these modules. Whenever you see the naming of these modules, they are basically verbs. So you can see here scan source. Now that looks like more of a verb. Now, whenever you think of a verb in English, it is actually denoting an action. Scan source, it denotes an action. Analyze, it denotes an action. Generate code, it denotes an action. So this is actually a transformational function or transformational unit which converts input to output. So you have here a token which is converted into a syntax tree. The syntax tree becomes an input to a generate code. The generate code in turn produces an output called object code. And this analyze uh, function would actually receive an input from a symbol table where symbols itself is fed as an input and it generates error indication as an output and output errors will actually give me the error messages. So functional view of a compiler here talks more about how modules or functions are interacted with each other and how transformation is happening from input to output. Now just opposite to the functional view we have something called as an object oriented design. That is another strategy what we use in design. So you can see here the object oriented design primarily focuses on objects. So what are objects? Objects are real time entities. Now they could be a real time entity, something like what you can physically see or they could be a conceptual entity where you cannot physically see but we can implement them in a program. For example, if you want me to give you a vague example, let us say time. Time is an example of a conceptual entity whereas a student is an object, car is an object, table is an object. They are all examples of real time entities. Now every object would will have an object name and it will have two things in common. One is called a property and the second one is called as a method. An object could also have an event. Let us not talk about the event now. But generally an object will have a name. It will have a property and it will have a method. So what are properties of an object? The properties of an object are those which actually describe the object. Now let us take an example of an object here called as a car. Now car has got certain properties like make, model, color and price which means this, they basically describe the car and they have certain methods called start, drive and park. Now these methods are actually unique to the car. Now, you want, now we are going to write a logic into this particular method like what will happen when you start the car, what will happen when you drive the car. So the functionality of the methods are defined here and the <coughs> properties are defined here. Now this properties and methods are actually put within an within an object called as car. Now like this we identify multiple objects in our uh, problem and we convert those objects into programming objects and we actually interrelate those objects by transferring data from one object to another objects in the form of messages. Now this is what you mean by you know object oriented communication where multiple objects you know talk to each other by sending and receiving data. Now the basic difference uh, uh, between an object oriented mechanism and a function oriented mechanism or an object oriented design and a function oriented design would be in function oriented design we talk about functions whereas in object oriented design we talk about objects. Now the same example here of a compiler which we have actually seen in function oriented design now has been converted into objects. Now you can see here 
those uh, method names which were earlier defined in function oriented design has now been converted into objects and now those method names were actually in the form of nouns of, i'm sorry were in the form of verbs but in case of objects we talk in terms of noun so when you talk in terms of noun you will actually talk of what the system consists of for example you have a source program you have a token stream you have a syntax tree you have an abstract code now all these are basically nouns or objects and again objects are communicating with each other in the form of messages where source program object is talking to a token stream object and a token stream object is talking to a symbol table and a grammar object but as you can see here in the functional view of an uh, compiler here you have scan source you have build system table you have analyze now, all these are verbs these are all methods now these methods are taking input from one method and it is transferring the output to another method which is, which means that input of output of one method becomes an input to an another method and but here in this case in object oriented uh, design we are talking in terms of objects where objects are interacting with each other in the form of messages now what is the basic difference between a functional approach and an object oriented approach as the name itself indicates straightforward focus is on functions in functional approach focus is on objects in object oriented approach object oriented approach gives you more clarity because objects in real world can be represented as program objects clear separation of data from functions okay now this is very very important that means data is actually separated from functions in case of functional approach but here in object oriented approach the data and functions are encapsulated in objects now have a look at this diagram here i can show you once again you have the name of the object you have the attribute and you have the functions now attributes are nothing but the properties which describe that particular object the properties could be in the form of data now data and functions are actually put within a boundary called as an object unlike the case of a functional oriented approach where data is separate and functions are separate because of this function oriented approach will give you less data security whereas object oriented approach will give you more data security there is less amount of uh, flexibility in functional approach and there is more amount of flexibility in object oriented approach flexibility in terms of what suppose if i have written a program in object oriented approach or if i have made a design in object oriented approach the uh, maintenance of the program are changing the details of the program are fitting more requirements are making changes to the design becomes much more easier in object oriented approach but it will be a little more tedious as when compared to the functional approach now uh, the functional approach follows uh, top down approach that is uh, we actually take down the problem break the problem into number of sub problem arrive at uh, solutions to the individual problem that is called as a top down approach whereas object oriented approach follows a bottom up approach now what exactly you mean by a bottom up approach we will discuss this in detail in my future video series bottom up approach basically means that the smallest unit uh, of a design is an object okay and we collect all these similar objects together and build a class then we put all the classes together in a project so that is how is called in a package i mean to say this is called as an bottom up approach so data flow diagrams and er diagrams are the notations we use in functional approach whereas we use use case model sequence model and collaboration model in object oriented approach okay that's it for now uh, thank you very much for uh, watching please do subscribe to our uh, channel i will see you in the uh, uh, next session where we talk about uh, cohesion and uh, coupling uh, do like us on our facebook page spdec uh, bang till then take care